So I'm here at the Museum of the Rockies to look for radioactive dinosaur bones, radioactive fossils. And not all fossils are radioactive, but a good majority of them are because of the process that it takes to fossilize a bone is similar to the same process that's used to form deposits of uranium. And so these dinosaur bones, these fossils, will actually be found in the same areas that you would find deposits of uranium. Now to help me identify which dinosaur bones are radioactive, I brought two tools with me today. I have a Radicode 110 and my Radi B20ER. Uh, the radicode is going to be far more sensitive in detecting this radiation because a lot of it, uh, or a decent amount of it, comes off in the form of gamma radiation, and that detector is great for that. And actually, I'll, I'll be able to detect it through glass or um, a little further away, so I don't actually need to be in contact with the fossils for to detect the radiation. This Sioux exhibit is a temporary exhibit here at the Museum of the Rockies. They usually like change it up every so often, but this has actually been the most fitting one that they've had here in a while. It's really cool. So obviously this is just a cast of the skull. It's not gonna be radioactive like some of the other fossils are around here. And I also want to talk a little bit about the radiation that does come off of these fossils, the ones that are actually real fossils. Uh, the radiation is so low, it poses zero risk to anyone. Just want to make that super duper clear because some people hear radiation and all this other stuff and they kind of freak out a little bit. And so I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to educate people. Just had to get that out of the way. Not real. Now, not all dinosaur bones are radioactive, only some of them are, but enough of them are to kind of help see which ones are real and which ones are not. Because in a place like this, there are a bunch of reproductions. I don't want to say fakes, they're just, the real ones are a little more valuable and they have to keep a close eye on them. So this kind of shows like uh, kind of Montana's history, like the pioneer days and mining and the fur trapping industry and everything that existed here before, like with the Native American tribes and uh, kind of conquering the West, as it were, with uh, cattle, gold mining, stuff like that. It's very fascinating, but not what I'm here for. This is definitely one of the more busier areas of the museum because this is where all the T-Rex skulls are. It's a really cool spot. Thank you. 
this guy, this uh, Dulpinosaur, <laughs> I don't know how to say that name, but this is an actual real fossil, and I know that because it is a little radioactive. If this glass wasn't here and I was able to get a direct reading, it'd probably be a lot higher, but still the dose level is like so, so low. Now, since these legs are actually exposed, I can actually use my Radeye B20ER and see if I can get some other types of radiation other than gamma. So it'll probably be like some betas coming off of there too, but I don't know. Looks like a lot of it's just uh, gamma radiation. So now this is kind of interesting because the Morrison Formation is one of the layers of rock that uranium miners would always look for and usually put a drift in to look for uranium because it was like all along like that formation, the Morrison Formation and the Chinle Formation. Those were the two main formations where uranium was found. And so that this Stegosaurus was found in that same formation would mean that more than likely this is also radioactive as well. To be fair, they actually do label a lot of these uh, if they're casts, replicas, or actual fossils, but not all of them are labeled, so having a Geiger counter handy to check for radiation is kind of helpful and a little fun. Now, both of these are fossils, but only one of them is gonna be radioactive. And the one that's gonna be radioactive is gonna be the dinosaur fossil, not the woolly mammoth tooth that's here. But let's check them.
That's unexpected. Well, I guess that's going to be the end of the day here because of a fire alarm. Well, there might be something going on in there. I'm not sure. But anyway, hopefully you learned something about how dinosaur bones can actually be radioactive. And it's not really something to worry about or be concerned. It's just something that kind of happens. Well, that's kind of a weird way to end this video with the fire department coming here for a potential fire. But these things happen. Hopefully you found this uh, video somewhat educational. And you know, now you know that there are sometimes radioactive dinosaur bones. And it isn't something to really worry about. It's just something that kind of happens through the geologic process of fossilization. It's one of those things that some dinosaur bones, a lot of them, are going to be radioactive and uh, some of them won't be just because of where they were formed uh, usually it's the ones that were formed within ancient riverbeds those are usually the ones that are going to be radioactive the ones that weren't that were usually formed out in the sea or in other type of deposits those usually won't be radioactive but sometimes i run across a bunch of shark's teeth or something like that and those are a little radioactive too so it's all about uranium and radium being introduced into that fossilization process and those elements being locked away inside of those fossils. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.